Hey friends and everyone, welcome back to Netcode Hub Tunnel. I am Frederick, as you know this already, and I'm happy to have you here. I believe you're also happy to hear me. <laughs> Alright, so this video we are going to continue on our um, .NET 8 web app with interactive web assembly render mode, long name. <laughs> okay, so you can see that we started a project with the web assembly interactive render mode as a chat and using Signal R. And uh, the first one, we're able to create a hub. We connected, we created a URL, we consumed it, the method that we created. Aside from that, we were able to have a conversation with client who um, connect to the hub. Aside from that, we also learned how to get this chat saved into database and also retrieve them in our display so that later on, if somebody joins it, that person is going to see all the chat which was uh, previously held. Yes, and it is working perfectly. So if you haven't checked that video out, then the description here, check it out and it's there. You can watch it over there to get the better understanding to this. Okay, now let's assume you're done. Okay, so what is the next one? We're going to implement authentication to our application, a chat app. So we're going to protect our app. It's not anybody who can just pump into our app and start using. I'm not sure you would like your app to be that. You want to have an authentication system, correct one, so that as soon as the user wants to chat, he or she must get logged in before he can um, perform any tasks within an application. So within this, we're going to add cookie authentication. Why are we adding cookie authentication? Because that is the best for our chat app. Why? I believe you're asking yourself or you're asking me. Why? Or you're asking yourself why? <laughs> okay. The reason is, um, we don't want to store the token for a longer period. As soon as the browser gets closed, we want our token to also get rid of. The next time you want to chat, you have to log in again. We don't keep state for a longer period of time. As soon as your browser is open, yes, cookies available, you can use, you can chat. As soon as you close the browser, um, the app is off, oh, then your cookie tool is going to be cleared off. So the next time that you want to chat, we do not have any token stored in the local storage or etc. to retrieve it. No, you have to do it again. And now with this tool, within the cookie authentication, we are not going to set persist to true. When we set persist to true, it tells you that it's going to give it, it's going to add a certain number of days before this token or the cookie get expired. You see, so anytime that you log in, as soon as you close the browser, you close the tab, it means the cookie must be cleared off. And that is when persist is set to false, persistent. Okay, the token is too much. <laughs> what the thing okay so let's let's get going so we're going to work on the server first i have made a video on custom quick authentication in um, interactive render mode.net 8 web app so if you haven't checked that one out also check the description of the playlist okay you can also find everything in there and this video description contains the playlist and also contains some separate videos on that okay so since we are using SQL Server, we need to install these three packages and I believe you know them already, isn't it? What are they? One is what? EF Core, that is one, correct? The other one is what? SQL Server. And now two is perfect. These are the three packages that we need to install. So let's get them installed. And you know what? I have the package reference already. So I need not to install it again. But I believe you know how to install these, isn't it? That's fine. So this I'm going to do, let me just expand this and I'm going to right click on the server and I click on unload project. That is what I normally do. <laughs> yes. And in here from the package reference, we even have them here already because you know that we, we made an operation so we can um, save the data into database. And now we're using an SQLite. Okay. So would it be possible if you want to, or should we change this to an SQL server? Hmm, okay. You know, quick authentication, we are going to be using IdentityDB. So maybe I think we can um, use SQL server or SQLite, anyone? Okay, 
let's maintain the SQLite and see if possibly this identity manager can work with SQLite. If we couldn't, then we change it to SQL Server. Okay, so let's maintain what we have already. We have EF Core, we have the SQLite, and we have tools. Okay, so we close this. And now let's reload because we did not add anything. So let's reload. Now I'm going to unload the client. Okay. And now if I unload the client, we need to install one package to the client. And that is a component.webassembly.authentication. So here, the next line. Okay, so if I, so you can see we have Microsoft.asp.core.component.webassembly.authentication. That's what we need. Okay, so install this package as well. Save it. Now I right click on our reload project with dependencies. So we can have this package installed. So we're going to create a folder here. And maybe in a server, I'm going to name it as authentication. If you've watched the custom quickie video, you know the same thing that's what we are doing. So I'm going to say this authentication. We need to create our application user class, which is going to help from identity user. Because in here, we're going to take in name as well. So on the same authentication folder that we just created, we're going to add a class with this and here I'm going to make it short instead of application user. It's too long for me. What of you? That is the best one. Okay. So we'll load this app user. And now with this, I'm going to use uh, prompt. And now here I'm going to have a string of full name. Or maybe I'll make this require. And I'll say this equal to string dot empty. Okay, now this is going to head from identity user. Let's save this. Let's go in there and create our AppDB contest. So I'm going to create, let me just, okay, so AppDB contest to come. Let me add a folder to this. And I'll name it as, oh, okay, so we have it already. I've forgotten that we created this a long time. So we have an AppDB contest here. And now inside of the DB contest, we're going to use identity DB contest. And now, aside from doing that, we need to install the Microsoft the Internet Code Identity Identity Framework. Okay, so let's install this package. So just click on this and I'll go to install this, find latest version and install. Okay, so it is installing this. Let's wait. All right, so it has been installed successfully and we have no error again. Okay, so now we have our identity B contest and in that, we have to specify this app user class that we created, which inherit from identity user. Okay. So now we are done with this. We know we have a data connection set already in the app.json, so we're not going to tackle that. I said earlier that we're going to try with the SQLite. If it works fine, if it doesn't, then we're going to switch it to SQL Server. So let's try that and see. Two of us, we are going to do it together. Okay. Let's try that and see. Okay, so once you're done here, we need to configure our identity call, identity service. And let's go to the server and in here, we're going to add them here. So, before this app build, where is it? Okay, that is this one. We're going to have builder.service.addidentity call this one. Specify your app user. So here, dot add entity framework store. We're passing our DB contest class. That's fine. Aside from that, we're going to add sign in manager. 
then we're going to add default token provider that's what we need okay so we are not done after adding this identical service we have to also add authorization service and authentication service so we need two services to be added all right let's get this done the same builder the services dot add authorization then let's have builder dot services dot add authentication and inside this authentication we need to specify some options and now with this option we're going to say option dot default scheme oh i selected policy <laughs> we want default scheme so default do you have scheme okay see so what i did did you do the same authentication and i went in for an authorization <laughs> okay so we have default scheme and that is this one it's equal to identity constant dot application scheme that is first one we have the same thing so we can make a duplicate of this and here instead of having default scheme we're gonna have default sign in scheme and i'm gonna have the same thing so here you're gonna specify external scheme okay we then add identity cookie yes that is all it is very simple okay so once you're done with this we need to create perform migration so you have the database created the new ones and etc we need to actually do it okay so from package manager console first of all let's build this project so build solution this is built successfully so we go to package manager console then we say add migration we say add authentication and now this is done update database let's see if it will work with an sql then we can continue on else then we're going to change it to your sql server wow this is done did you see that did it get yours <laughs> okay so i'm going to launch db browser and now with this we're going to open up to um the file what we did so click on this go to open database and now in here i'll choose my chat db open this and now wow you see we have a whole lot of tables in here so browse data we have ASP.NET rules, we have this, we have that, we have uh, what we are constructed here. What we need actually most is the ASP.NET users. For now, we have no user. So, we're going to see if we can add user to this. Let me close everything. Yes, yeah, so we have in this, we have full name. Oh, see what I did, full name. Whoa. This one, let's see if I app DB for app user, you go to the what is it authentication app user. Whoa, I, I believe you saw this, isn't it? So, full name. Okay, so now we have done this, we have to add migration again. So, add migration, and let me say this is update full name. And I'm going to make that change in here, okay and let's see the change so from full name w up to full name yes update this and it's done so with this once you're done we can close all this stuff you're going to create the next one is going to create a class now this class you're going to name it as persistent server authentication state provider which is going to inherit from a uh, server authentication state provider this prepares the token of the user 
authentication of the user and now it passes it on to the client to consume it and in the client we can also create another class that is known as persistent authentication state provider which whereby that class is going to inherit from authentication state provider because as soon as it gets the data it gets a service from the uh, persistent component state then it's going to use going to retrieve the claims in that service and now inject it into the authentication state provider whereby we can um, use it everywhere in the page okay so let's create this let's first work on the server because that is what we are targeting now we're going to create a class in here and now this class is going to be persistent server authentication state provider it sounds long right you can just shortcut this <laughs> okay you can make it PSAST. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So PSAST. Uh, that, that's going to be the persistent server authentication state provider. And now this class is going to inherit from server authentication state provider. And we must include I disposable. Now this we must implement an interface for this. And we have to make this happen. Okay. We need some properties that we need to create persistent component states, which is actually going to handle the authentication state and are transport it to the client. And this is going to be a private. So I have a read only. Persistent. Oh, persistent. This is persistent. Component states. And now we can name this as state. We need to also create another one, identity option. So private read only identity options. And we say this is options. We need last one, not last one. <laughs> we need private, the same read only persistent service. We need to actually subscribe to this service. Then we say this subscription. And aside from that, we need a private. There's going to be a task of authentication state. So for user authentication, authentication, authentication state. And now here, we call it as authentication state. The same thing. I'm going to add a task to it. Okay. So there's authentication states, and we can make this as nullable. Okay, now once we're done here, we're going to have our public. We need to actually create constructor. So CTO, oh, <laughs> CTO R, create our constructor in here. And now we're going to inject this one. So persistent component states, this one, persistent component states. So down here, I'm going to have this. Then we need um, I options. So I options. I options. We specify in identity options. And now we call this as option assessors. Okay. Now we have injected this. We need to initialize this field. Okay. So initialize field of state. Now this state, this is wrong. We don't want to, to do this. You want to say this state here is equal to the persist component state. Oh, so this is supposed to be persist component state. Should it be like this? Changes to P, small one. And I've seen state here is equal to this persistence component state. Okay. That's what we want. Aside from that, you're going to say options is equal to option assessor dot value. Okay. All right. So now we have this in the constructor. What again can we do? We can have on authentication state change. We can create an event to handle that as soon as it gets changed. So authentication state change. 
plus equal to then on authentication state change okay so we have this but we need to create definition for this so create a method for this we have the method in here okay now aside from this we're going to subscribe this so we're going to say subscription is equal to state dot register on persistent then in here we specify on persistent async we're going to create that method soon so persistent async let's specify render mode render mode dot so we need to include this component dot web so render mode dot interactive web assembly because that is what we are creating it for okay we have to now terminate this we need to create a method for this on persistent async so let's populate um our let's say our claims but before we do that we need to create a property or a, um a model to gather all the claims that we need from the user and now send it to the component state whereby the component state also going to transmit it or transport it to the client and now we need the client we can retrieve it okay so in here to the client we can add a class with this so let's go to the client in here and now within the client we have okay so we can create a model to handle this let's add a folder and now name this as models and now with this models we're going to add a new model and it's going to be user info user info what are the properties we need we need string now this string we need user id so we don't need we need only the id in here we also need string this is email we need string then full name we need these three properties okay so let's set them here now when you come in here within this authentication you know we pass in or we pass in the payload of tax authentication state so with this time that we have in here we're going to assign this authentication task that we set defaultly to this so before when this method is called we pass in the task and now we want to assign the default one that we created to the task that's all that we are doing okay so maybe we need not to be using this we can use this uh, lambda expression to get rid of that okay so now once you are done we need to create a method for this so control period generate a method for this we have this method down here i'd like to put it here rather <laughs> okay so the method will be here rather and that's on persistent so in this what i'm going to do we are now going to fish out the user so we can say that um var authentication states authentication state is equal to await authentication um this okay authentication state task okay because this when we call this method we pass the authentication state and this contains the identity of the user so we assign it here so before we call this method this method has been called already and we have the value for this authentication task then we assign it to this okay let's terminate this so let's check if user authenticated only that is where we want to perform the following um thing okay so we're gonna say that let's create a principal and grab this first so we say this is principal not prim it is print yeah very simple one so principal is equal to 
you're gonna have authentication state dot then you can have user in here so we're saying that if user okay if principal not user if principal dot identity dot identity dot is authenticated is equal to true that is where we want to perform the following what are you going to do you want to grab in user id is equal to then principal dot first then in here we pass in this option dot claims identity dot you can see from here we have user id we can make this number and now we want it value that is what we are interested so let's make a duplicate of this and now here we need email now email here it is a username so first find first then we're gonna say that here it is user let's say email claim type that value so we get the values in here okay now from this we want to grab the name so in order to grab the name what can we do so you want to say that this is full name here So full or oh, full name. <laughs> okay, so that's full name. Now with this, we want to grab principal dot identity. So we're going to remove all these. And our principal dot identity dot claims. Do you have claims in here? Okay. Then let's see. So dot claims dot first don't use first we're going to use where or let me use you want to get name so where f f dot um, type is equal to claims type claim types dot name okay then dot you want to grab the last one the reason is the first one email is also a name username so we want to grab the last one and now we have a full name and our email this is going to pick the first one and i'm going to pick the last one so we can have the person's name we try that and see if we have any error here we're going to change it and now make it work okay so don't worry all right now once you're done we can now set it to the state that's a persistent component state if and only none of this is null so we have to check so if user id do you have user id talking about this okay so if user id oh it's supposed to be in here you know i forgot that and i believe you didn't so we're going to say if user id is not equal to now and email is also not equal to now and full name is also not equal to now that is only when we want to perform this so you want to say that state dot persist so keep the state as json and i pass on to the client we have name of the model that we are using and what's the name of the model is user info class user info class in that we are creating a variable of what new user info new user 
info and what are the some of the properties that we need you know we have id isn't it this id called to user id we have name name is do you have name or full name so full name is equal to full name and the last one email is equal to email yes that's what we want okay this is string and this is string okay so we have full name dot where and what is it saying they saying that cannot um, convert claims to so let's see dot last dot value yes it's now string <laughs> okay so control kd we have it well let's clear this okay now when disposing what can we do we just dispose a subscription so we're going to say that subscription dot dispose and we say authentication state change where is it state change we unsubscribe so that's why we are minus in <laughs> okay from on authentication state change okay so now we are done with this we have to register this in the program.cs file very simple so we go to the program and down here we're going to say that builder.services dot add let's add cascading first before you forget this okay then builder.services dot add scope and on this scope, we need an authentication state provider. Do you have it? Authentication state provider. Then we specify the persistent persistent server. That is a the fake uh, provider that we created. Okay. Persistent server authentication state provider and okay so we did not close this well okay there is done what is left let's go to our route and this can be found we need a component so you can see we have this a route in here and now in the route, we need to specify instead of this authorized view. We don't need to add cascading anymore because we've added that as a service. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say authorize route view. Okay. I don't think we need all this. We can just <laughs> take this off and I include as a namespace. So control period using this and that is it. So in here, we can, we can also close this. When if you are not authorized, what do you want to do? If you authorize you, what do you want to do? But for now, we want to maintain. So before you um, route to any page, we want to see, you want to make sure you are authorized, you authenticated. Okay. That's fine. What's the next thing to do? So we need to create a service in here. Or uh, before you create a service, we actually want to log out, right? And now in using cookie authentication in this .NET 8 Blazor Web App Interactive Render Mode, we cannot actually sign out as we normally do from identity, 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 identity dot sign in manager dot sign out, and it's gonna work. <laughs> Not gonna work in that way. Can try that and 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 um comment it <laughs> below this video later on. So we need to create an endpoint. Now this endpoint is gonna be a minimal API endpoint for only the logout. Okay. Actually, as for me, I do hate minimal APIs a lot. I don't know the reason why. <laughs> but for now, that's the only thing that we can do to sign Lisa out. So let's get this created. And after creating, we're going to add this to the service as well. So when we say authentication folder, we're going to add a class with this. 
And on this class, gonna be identity component endpoint route builder extension. Wow, long name. <laughs> okay, let's go. So identity component endpoint route builder extension. Okay. So we have this class created and now this class is going to be um, internal static class. So let's have internal because it's going to be be here only. Now within this, we need to create a public static and now the return type of this is I endpoint, I endpoint conversion the other. Convention or convention? Convention. <laughs> okay. So convention. And this should come from I endpoint Microsoft dot builder namespace. Okay. Then let's say this is map. We're gonna give it a name. So you can here you can give it any name of your choice. Okay. So map additional identity and points. And now with this, we need to specify this to make a self-reference. And now we are making an explicit uh, referencing of this I endpoint. Oh, see what I did? I, I, no, <laughs> I endpoint. Okay, so I endpoint route builder. So we need this and this also should come from the namespace of routing. Okay, let's give it a name. We say this is why is it? We say this is endpoint. You can add S. Okay. So from the next line, what are we doing here? We're gonna do we try do you have to try an exception if this is null? That's not needed because you're gonna call only a method in here and before we call that method, the properties or what we need is going to be available. So let's create var account group. Is equal to endpoint so oh I want to get this endpoint to what is doing so endpoint dot map group and now this we're gonna make it as account So since we're going to make a call to this, let's have this for a slash. And aside from this, we're going to say account group dot map post. So dot map post. Because this is going to be a post, we're going to post it to this endpoint so we can have access to the HTTP contest and I'll sign out easily. Okay. So um, map post. And now in here, we're going to say this is logout. So the, the full route here is account slash logout. Okay, this is going to be an async. And now within async, we're going to pass in, these are the parameters, claim. We need um, claims principal, this one. And let's say this is the user coming in. We need to also pass in sign in manager so we can sign the user out and now we need app user for the class that we created and now in here we need the sign in manager okay so we have this claim and in that we pass in a claim principal as user then we also pass in a sign in manager which takes in the application user class that we created and now we give it a name assign in manager okay aside from that what can we do we can then point this out okay so we don't need this now when we point this out okay so let's Terminate this. We're gonna say that await sign in manager since we have the sign in manager 
we can now go in for sign out because here we have the http contest I'm not sign in see don't make mistake as i did so sign out and after sign out we want to then return i endpoint convention builder and then this is going to be the typed result typed result dot local redirect and now with this redirect you want to redirect to the home page if you want to redirect to any other page you can make this happen in here okay then last one here we're going to return account group okay so you can see this only for a sign out and that's only what we're going to do aside from doing this control period we can just remove unnecessary usings let's make this simple okay let's go to the program and now down here we're going to say app dot map additional endpoint okay so we add this in here all right so now this is done this is ready the next thing that we're going to do here is to create our login and our register page okay so um in our pages in here maybe you can create an account um folder to the pages let's say this is account folder in the pages we're going to have two pages in in this the first one is going to be what guess what <laughs> login so login then we're going to have register isn't it so let's finish the login now with the login what are we going to do we're going to create an instance of this so maybe you can have a string message or error etc so maybe you want to display message in case you want to and in here we're going to use a login model so we can create it down here you're going to say there's a class so this is login model and we need so this is public um, string so we need email and we need email and password so you must log in with this so we can set on top here as required which then comes from component model so a system that component models or data annotations we can include it here so we're going to use using and system system dot component model dot data annotation so we can now use this let me close this this login up pick component and open it again okay so we have this and now we can use required let's see okay data annotations not annotation annotations okay we can then make a copy of this and now in here we're going to put it in here this is not now so you're going to say string dot empty we can just copy this and assign it to this as well and aside from this this is email address and now this is password right okay so we're going to make this field each required you have, you have the email and password that's the only thing that we need in here we can just remove this now let's assume let's create um, async task and we say this is login async so in case i click on login what am i going to do we first going to search the user so we need to inject our signing manager in here so we're going to say that at 
inject so we need user manager we specify this app user then we say this is user manager this needs a namespace of Microsoft that so it's over here and our app user also needs a namespace that we need to add it okay we also need our sign-in manager so let's have our sign-in manager we take in this app user and now we say this is sign in sign left the in okay so we now have this what we're going to do first is we're going to say check or find user so we say var find user is equal to await user manager dot find by email and now in here we specify oh we did not specify so we're going to have um private and this is login model and let's say this is login model we have get set equal to new then with this login model we can say this login model dot email okay maybe we can just change this to that small l so login model dot email we're going to find it so here if so if find user is equal to now it means user is not found so in then what are we going to do we're going to say that message is equal to sorry user is not registered yeah something like that and at the end we want to return else what you want to do it's the user is found then let's check the user password so we're going to say var result is equal to await and in that we can use a sign in not single <laughs> sign in manager dot you're going to have an api called check password sign in async we specify in the user finding user and also the password that's a login model dot password okay and now it's lockout we set this to false this is the first time login so we need not to um say that so here we're going to check and now this is going to return a boolean true or false so we're going to say that if result that is false what are we going to do we can have this results dot succeeded we can just copy the same thing in here and instead of this we say that sorry and we can make it like invalid email or password okay but in case everything is intact then i'm going to say await sign in manager dot sign in async or password sign in let's use password sign in and now in that we're going to specify the user find user we need a password and that's a login model dot password aside from that we need is persistent we want to set this to force because as soon as the user logs in and i'll close the browser or the tab authentication must also be closed and now it's lockout so we set this to force as well okay so now we have this i can put this in this line like this beautifully this can also be in here okay so now that we log in successfully what are we going to do we can then return or instead of us returning this we can inject navigation manager and now so at inject navigation manager and this is nav manager so after signing in successfully 
you want to say nav manager dot navigates you and now you want to force reload okay our login is ready but i left the ui for ui i don't have time so we can be typing out the ui i'm going to grab it <laughs> and you know i believe you can also create a simple ui for yourself which is going to handle the username and password and etc yes i believe you can do that okay so on top here i'm going to have my simple ui and as an edit form which has this method as post so here we are not using interactive um interactivity because it's just a form and when we make this post and i give it a form name we can handle it ourselves okay so this login model or maybe you can make it as login user okay and here we're going to say this is login model so here it is login async do you remember and this is login model so with this i'm going to change this to email to so login or oh, where i have this input i have to change them okay the same thing applies to this one get change and that is it we don't want to so we can just remove this okay now if i click on the button then submit this to the form very simple one and now this is message so in case you have the message is not now then please display the message to the user very simple okay so that's all that we are doing in here you see that's fine now let's save this and now let's also work with the the other one that's a register so we're going to create a class in here is it a class but since we are using this a form i think we're going to we can use supply from um, form you can use this attribute to make it a um, specific so we can use supply parameter from form yes against the login model okay so that we know that it's going to receive the data from the form okay we save that let's go in there and create our register page as well so register component yeah so with this we go to the login and now what we did or what we added you're going to also add the same thing so we can just cut this like this go to the import and now here we can just put it here okay very simple so once and for all <laughs> we're going to have it access here okay so register and now for the register what are the things that we need we have to create a class for this and this is class so this is register model and in this we have a property and this is public string you know this is full name that is the first one we have our get and now set aside from this we have provide email provide password and the last one maybe we have confirm password so with this confirm password we're going to use an attribute known as compare and now we're going to use name of password this also required and now let's make this available to this as well password required we make this required and now let's say this is also email address then we make this required as well okay let's save this we can close this register open this again yes so now we have it so let's set this to string that's empty you can copy this assign it to this one assign it to each 
Okay. Now we have this. Okay, so this also this is gonna work. We have required required email address, that's fine. We have password and so forth. So we have one, two, one, two, three, four properties. We need to create an instance of this, so register. We're gonna have register. Then gonna have get set. Then we can set this quote name. So let me make this as register. Okay. Then let's say this is register async. Now this must be an async task. We need to also supply this. Supply from form. Then in here, we say var app user is equal to new app user. Then here, we're going to say that we're going to have full name is equal to registration model dot full name. We have email is equal to registration model dot email we have password hash is equal to registration model dot password hash on the password then we have username is equal to registration model dot email so you see the one that i was talking about when getting the claims you know username here is part of the name Okay, so we are assigning this email to the username. So if you want to assign um, the full name, then we have to retrieve it with the last one to get the full name. Maybe when you try this, you're going to understand this. Okay, so now we have this. What are we going to do? We're going to say result is equal to. Then we're going to have user manager dot. We're going to have create async. Do we have create async here? We don't. So you must have an await first before we can have that method. So user manager dot create async. I'm still not getting the create async. I'm going to have to write it. Yes, I have it. And I need to provide the app user and also the password registration model dot password. You see? Yes. And it's going to get created. So here we can check if results dot succeeded. Then what are we doing? We want to have maybe another string message is equal to or we can specify this. So we can say that message is equal to maybe error occurred was creating the account. Okay, then we're going to return. But in case it succeeds, then we're going to have nav manager dot navigate to home page. So if your account gets created, you can just go to login, etc. So you can log in. Okay. So as soon as you create an account, you can just log in. Then navigate to the login. Okay. We save this one. And now this one too, we need to design our UI. So you know what? I'm not going to design a UI here. I believe you can do that. So let's set this to message. <laughs> Okay, so we have register user async. So this is register async. Then we have the method as post. Since we're not using it interactive, it is static rendered. So we have the form name register form. And this is, this is register model. So you can copy this. And now where we have 
So this is not going to be name. That is full name. The same thing applies to this. And here it is. Full name. Okay. Now email is email. So we need to change that. Email is email. Then password is password. The same thing is password. And I confirm password is the same. Okay. Then register button. We submit it. And that'll be all. Okay. We save that. And that is all that we need to do here. Now, when the user is logged in or registered, will this work? <laughs> yes, of course it will. How are we sure this is going to work? Let's navigate to the... We have our nav menu, isn't it? So on the nav menu from here, this can be found in the layout, nav menu. We go in there, we have only um, one in here. I want to check this. We have only chat. So we want to add one more. We're going to have this and that. Okay. Now it is a chat. And now before you visit the chat, chat and you're going to have logout. So let's for now, let's say this is logout. And on this logout, we must have this authorized view. So we can remove this line and apply this. Okay, so this is authorized. Let's say this is not authorized. We have that. Authorized. Now this one. Let's authorize. We need to use this authorization. Then we can go ahead. And now use authorized. So if you are authorized. If you are not authorized, okay. So if you are authorized, we want you to see the chat and now log out. If you are not authorized, then we want you to see register and now sign out. You see, this is very simple. So we have login, then we have register. Okay, and now this, this is going to match to register. And this is login. You see? Or maybe account. Account slash login. And you can have the same thing. Account slash register. Okay, so that's the, the, the namespace, what's the namespace, the link that we are setting up. Okay, then this is logout. So this logout here is going to be a form. Let's see how the form is going to look like. So we're going to clear this one. Okay, so within here, we can just clear this enough. And I'm going to use this HTML form. So we have this form. And now we know this form, we need to specify this action. And now this action is account. That is a map group name slash the route here is logout. So you have to that. The method here that we're going to use is post. Okay. So let's have this anti forgery token. I can just use this and I'll get rid of it. Very long one. Okay. And let's have a button to handle this. Now this button. We're going to have it as the type. This class is going to be nav link. And we can have a span element in it. And on this span element, you can have this class of bootstrap icon bi bi. And here we specify an arrow dash bar 
dash left dash nav dash menu okay so bi arrow arrow this is you have an arrow bar right so we have bi arrow <laughs> then dash bar dash left dash nav dash menu <laughs> yeah and that's all we have and now we can give the name here as logout okay so this is an icon bootstrap icon so that's what we are. you can just re maintain only the logout and i get rid of this span and it's still gonna work okay trust me so now you're done with the server now let's go in there and try to create um account and see if we're gonna actually have into database then we see how to log into the, from the client and now consume this using the component state service and the uh, auth state that we're going to create next. Okay, so you can see that since we are not registered, we are not logged in, you can see we have only login and register. Chat is off. Logout is also off. Now let's register. Oh, account slash login. We did not specify the route. I believe you've done that already, isn't it? Good job. So on top here, see, no page route. So at page, then we say account slash login. I believe yours is running because you did not follow this. You did the writing. <laughs> okay, so at page, and here I'm going to say it's an account slash register. Now let's rewind this again oh okay so this is an account where's the t let me make sure it's the same thing from this login is it the same yes it is the same let's run this again so let's click on register we have a form ready in here as you can see beautifully now i'm going to open this because this is where we're going to save up to okay so let's see if i have it in this form I'm going to type the name as Netcode Hub. So email is admin at admin.com. Oh, let me say admin.gmail. The password is admin at 123. Admin at 123. And I'm going to click on register. And now let's see, if you're able to navigate to login, it tells us that registration is successfully. Whoa. And yes, it is. You can see it's trying to log in. But I want to check the, the route that we specified. We did not do the right thing. And I believe you did also. You created it before running, isn't it? <laughs> so account slash login. This is how it's supposed to be. Now, it is a turn of this to refresh and see if what we did is here. Whoa, we have it. You see that? So, you can see that we have from my, in here, we have uh, ID. There's an ID in here. We have the name, netcode. We have the user name. We have the etc, etc. There's the password and etc. Okay, so you have everything set. Now, this is the time for us to log in. But before we log in, we must create a service in here. So, we can see that, yes, we are duly logged in. Now let's terminate this and this is working. And now let's go to the client. So now we are done with the server. Now within the client, we're going to also create the same folder for this. Now we're going to name this as authentication. And with this, we're going to create a class and this is going to be persistent component, ah, not component, persistent state, um, authentication state provider. So persistent. Authentication state provider. I know the first one was inheriting from server authentication state provider. This is going to inherit from authentication state provider. Authentication state provider. So we have to include the namespace and we need to install this package. Okay. So now let's install this and it's coming from install this package. Okay, we're having this use local version. Maybe we can try that and see. Uh, okay, so inside this package and let's wait. 
Yes, this is done. We need to create a constructor for this, and I believe you know this. We need to implement the class from this. Okay? So we have this class. We're going to work on this later on. So with this, what I'm going to do, we are going to consume the service of the state that we have in the persistent component state service and maintain it or get a claim from it and I'll pass it on to the authentication state provider to get it broadcast to every page that we use this authorized attribute. Very simple. Yeah, so let's see. We have to create a lot. <laughs> so let's start creating this. Now we're going to have a private. You need to create an authentication state as a default one, which contains no user authentication. And that's going to be the, the default one, okay? So we're going to say this is going to be the static and it's read only. Let's say this is task of authentication state. And now we call this as default authenticated task. Okay. So, and here we are going to say this is equal to tax dot from result what is the tax dot from result and now which result new authentication new authentication state and now here we have new claim principal so new claim principal before we have maybe we can just remove this so we can add it as a namespace to make it short then in the claim principal we can then have new identity user so with new claims identity Let me do it again with new claims identity. Yes, so when the app initializes, we're going to create a default authenticated task. And here there is no authentication against any user. So it's, it's a anonymous. Okay, then we're going to have a private read only. This is task of authentication task oh state not task don't confuse you <laughs> we say it as authentication uh, task and we assign this to the default one that we just created so before we call this method with this method as soon as we call this method in here the persistent auth states uh, provider this method gets the state and now it's going to be assigned to this one Okay. Align this one. We need another bracket. We can four. All right. Now uh, we need to create a constructor because you know constructor is the first and first method to run when you call an instance of a class. So you want this to run first. So you must create constructor and instead of typing everything. I can just type in C T O R. <laughs> And I didn't say constructor is going to pass come in with a persistent component state, which contains the state, the user info model. The user, sorry, <laughs> okay, which whereby the user info model also contains the email, the user ID, and etc. Okay, so we're going to say that this is persistent component state, and we call this as state. Okay. So within this state, we're going to check if this state is not null, then we're going to create a variable out of the of user info and now transfer or retrieve or assign the content as a JSON to this. And now this is done automatically by using this try take from JSON. It's going to convert it from the JSON and now convert it into a model or .NET object. Okay. So we're going to say that if dash states so this is going to return true or false. So we are saying that if the state dot try tick from JSON, and now this JSON is going to convert to this user info model. 
okay and now in that we want to use the key so here we need to provide the name of the user info okay as i'm providing this you must have this out variable and you're creating instance of it and now we assign that and maybe you can say or if user info is not two okay oh this must be close this has let petty petty mistake that we should not be doing <laughs> okay so if this is null then what are we doing we want to just return so instead of this we can just so if this is false then you want to just return peacefully but in case it is not then that is where we have to extract the claims so we say claims we're gonna get it from system that security dot claims so maybe i want to have this so claim and i'm going to say this is claims is equal to we can use this to handle the list and inside this we're going to have new claim and now with this claim we're going to specify the claim types okay so dot the first one is name identifier and that is the, the id okay now this id we're going to get it from user info dot id aside from that what again we have email we have name so comma comma this now this is email and then we can get this from email this is full name do you have full name here <laughs> okay so claim types dot name and we can get this from user info dot full name okay so now we have our claims ready what are you going to do we have to assign it to the all state task so let's from the down here we have to get this prepared we're going to say authentication state task is equal to tax dot from the results of what we are doing we're going to have a new authentication state and in that we have a new claim principal and in that we have a new claim identity and now within the identity we pass in the claims and also we pass in the authentication um, type as name of then we specify persistent where it is coming from component state provider do you have that we must add provider control period do you have it from here So this is persistent authentication state provider. This is not component. Persistent. Okay, so we made it persistent authentication. Authentication state provider. And to make it shots let's go in there and grab this and i'll paste it here okay okay so we need to add one more yes now what is this saying so talking about the null 
that by mine <laughs> okay uh, let's see if it is this one that is talking about hmm. the simple one we are done okay and now with this method we can use this lambda expression and now we use this authentication task which we have because can unless I speak we are assigning this to the response of this the claims so now this has the authentication state of the user okay so control k d save everything now once you are done here we go in there to register this so let us the program.cs file and before this service we're going to have builder.services.add let's also add a cascading authentication state in here so we do not add the the, the markup all the components okay now aside from this let's have our builder.services that services dot add add scope and I need to provide this authentication state provider authentication state provider and now we need to add a persistent authentication state provider yes this is done beautifully all right now that this is done what can we do let's try to get the user contest okay so we go to maybe the home page from you know from here from the chat page we can have the user name on top here okay so maybe um you can include it here something like this and within this we only want to display this that is when you are authorized so we can use an attribute on top okay or we can even use this to get a contest so authorize view and we say this is authorized we can have this and now let's see at contest dot then identity all dot user dot where or we can have dot user dot identity dot claims do you have claims in here if not then user dot do you have claims okay dot where then we can extract you want to display full name so f dot f dot type is equal to claims type let's use claim types dot name and now with this name we have username and we have the full name so dot last dot value so you want to grab the user name and we need this to get the user name okay if you're authorized okay so that's what we are doing in here now let's let's run this and check it out okay so we are in here now let's go to login now let's provide this admin and the password is admin at one two three let's click on login and now let's wait and see if you're actually going to sign in yes so we have in here click on okay we are signing go to inspect now go to um this application go to cookie and i can see we're going to have the cookie bin uh in here let me open this widely for you you see this so this identity application app asp.net called identity dot application user okay 
in case I click on logout, what happens? So if I click on logout, this is still there. You see, this must get cleared off. And now it is navigating to account slash logout, but it is not finding it. Why? Let's find out. So we go to this nav menu. That's where we had our form, which navigate to account. And now we have everything set in here. Let's check this, the route of this. So let's check our identity a component extension. Oh, see, so you know, account. I know you did the right thing, right? That's fine. That's why I like you so much. Yeah, so <laughs> you did the right thing. You did not follow what I did. Yes. Okay, so let's review this again and let's see if we are going to be signing out successfully and I redirect you the home page. Okay, now let's log in. So let's first check if we have the token. So you can see there's no more there. So we're going to log in in here. Log in and I'll check it out. Yes, we have it. Click on log out. Ah, it is off. Yes. So when you log out, you don't want to come to the home page. <laughs> okay. You want to go to um, login. So here we're gonna say account slash login. Let's refresh this and check it out. So we are in here. Let's log in. Let's log out. Yes, and now we are in. You see that? Now, when the page loads, we want to go to login straight. You want to go to home page. You log in before you go to the home page. So we can access this from that end. Now we set the login as a home page, right? So instead of this account slash login, we now set this as a home page. You see this? And now from the home page, we go to from the home page, we set this as home. So when you go to login page, when you're successfully logged in, you go to the home. Okay. And now from the the endpoint when you sign out, you go back home. And that's the the login. Update is clear. So we have login. So let's see. If I run this again, let's see what we're going to have. And also, before we do that, when you check the nav menu, we must to we have to do it. So from the login, uh, this is a login, so we have it and it is straight away from the home. It is register. That's why we have this. And from um, this side, we have the chat. It is to the chat. And now we have to provide a login page. Not a login, let's provide a home page. So on top here. And you must be authorized to see the home page. Yes, of course. If you're not authorized, you're not going to see the home page. So we said this is home. And now um, it navigates you to the home. Okay. All right. So within the home, we can just use an authorize and I'll say something. So let's say. We use this authorize. And now in here, we're going to say authorize. Or we can have this the contest straight dot. Maybe we can just go to the where we have the chat. Now, all that you need to do is to just grab this. Now, paste it in here. And here, I can say this is welcome. Okay, so I have this welcome and you can now join the chat. So add your own. <laughs> add what you want to add. Okay. 
So now let's run this and check it out. Yeah, so as now the page loads, you can see that you are in the home page, as you can see. Now let's log in. So when we log in, let's see what we're going to have. Yeah, so you can see that you have your welcome, you have your email, you can now join the chat. But you want to display the actual name, not the email. So maybe we can just edit our service and in here we can just grab in for, we have the name in here. And this name is going for the username. As you can see from here, identity.claim.name, we can grab the username. Because if I use dot, we don't have username here, we have user data. So it means we can use a name. And now, in order to get a name, it means when setting up the claims, you have to set the username as a full name, isn't it? So have a look. Now, where we go for the registration, username, we don't want to set it to email. We rather want to set this to the person's name. So that's the username, because this is what you're going to be using in the service, okay? All right, so now let's see. We're going to clear the settings off and I'll try it again and see if this will work for us. So right change just refresh it and I reload this. Let's log in so it's ready. Okay, okay so this is not, we're not going to have anything because database or the data is being deleted. So yeah, sorry that it's not registered. Yeah, we know that. Thank you so much for letting us admin. Then password, we have admin at one, two, three. Admin at one, two, three. Click on register. Whoa, so we know after registration, we have to go to login. And that is a home page. So now let's log in. Yes, and you can see we have welcome netcode hub. You can now join the chat. Wow. Let's click on chat. And now... If I click on this chat, let's see. Yeah, so Netcode Hub. So Netcode Hub chat, Netcode Hub, that is your name. And what of this? You have to remove this one. We have an error here, right click on this. Let's go to inspect this. Now let's figure it out and see the kind of error that we are having. There's no reset service for the type. I authorization policy provider. So, Okay, so let's see how to work on this. So we go to the service from the client section. And then in here, we're going to add authorization core. So let's see. Builder.services. services dot add authorization core. This solves the problem, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's run this and check it out. Now let's log in. And now this problem must be solved, I guess. Let's see. So click on this chat. We want to navigate to the chat. Yes, so I think. Let's see. Will it pop up again? No, it hasn't. Yes. So you can see we are connected and now everything is intact. So we have a Netcode hub and we can edit this from this Netcode. We can remove this from that end. And then we have this. So nobody can just stand up and just bomb into our app. You must have yourself authenticated. So you must first register an account. Then you must first, you must secondly <laughs> log in. Okay. So after registering an account, you have to log in. You can just log out and now we are in here. So log in to access an account or to chat. Then you log in or create an account, then you can now log in. Well, part of in case I click on this, let's see. Home. Oh, I mean, <laughs> let's see if I'm logged out. But if I click on the home, I mean, <laughs> you see, if I click on chat page or chat, I mean, whoa, this bad. <laughs> Do you have an idea to solve this? Hmm, let's see. We go to the page. Now from the home page in here, let's see if we can add attribute on top. So add attribute. And now this attribute, we are saying that you must be authorized. Oh, 
and this is coming from Microsoft dot namespace Microsoft dot oh it's not coming we have to add it to ourselves <laughs> okay so let's never mind let's see using and we need to have this Microsoft Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot authorization do you have it yes and that is fine let's copy the same onto the chat page and now here let's put it here let's save this let's rerun this app and check it out so let's check it out if I click on I'm logged out and I want to go to chat page so let's clear all this so here if we nav try to navigate to chat page we are back to login and if I try to go to home page we are also back to login so if we take a close look you see that we have account slash login initially we made it as the home page for the login i change it so when you go to the code you can see here we have account slash login the reason why i did that is um when you check the code you can see it has a return url automatically from this cookie so with this url it is navigating to account slash login so I don't know whether this is encoded. This is uh, um, uh, um, save in somewhere. I'm yet to find out. So we have to set this the route of the login page the same as this, so we can have the return URL. Okay. If not, we're gonna have an error here. It's gonna be uh, we're gonna have a return URL of what account slash login. But when I log on to that page, no component has it, that route. Okay, so we have to actually set in that way. All right, so we've been able to um, integrate the authentication system in our chat. So now we can use that can now log in or register account login, and now he can now start chatting. So the next update I'm going to do here is if I want to chat, I do not want to see this name. My name, I don't want to be typing this username because I have the username in here. So I want to make a reference to that username. And I'll get it displayed itself. So we're going to get rid of this. Since we have the username, I'm going to extract it from the authentication state and I'll use it in here. But for now, I think it's okay. We've been able to integrate it and now let's pause here, take some rest, and I'll come back again and I'll continue on. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to catch up again. Till then, take care.